And a good evening to you, rugby fans. Welcome to the Space City. We're in Houston, Texas. It is National Collegiate Rugby, Collegiate Rugby Championship 15, Houston 2023. The University of Northern Iowa Panthers gets set to take on the University of Memphis Tigers in this Division II semifinal. The winner will play Indiana University of Pennsylvania on Sunday in the finals. I am John Broger, joined once again by the contact coach, Craig Wilson. Little rainy day, shaping up to be a beautiful evening here in Houston. Yeah, it sure is. It's a wet day, a bit windy as well, but I'm sure both teams are going to handle it well. Here at Sabercats Stadium, we're going to take a look at the matchups here. It was Indiana University of Pennsylvania. They beat Vermont for the right to go to the finals. And now we have Northern Iowa taking on the University of Memphis winner to play IUP on Sunday. That should be a great matchup. Have to get through this one first. We had a chance to talk to some of the players for UNI earlier. You know, being out here earlier, it was pretty empty showing up and um, just good to get, get moving around, getting off the bus, uh, seeing everybody work together again and get out there. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really excited for, for what tomorrow has to offer because I think we're going to do that. The path to get here has been super awesome. I think that um, one of my favorite memories was in St. Louis uh, playing Montana State. Just the entire team stuck it to them. We tackled hard, played hard, and um, that's what we got to continue doing. So, yeah, going into Memphis, I think that we're going to play our hardest and it's going to be a physical match. Your team running the field in purple. It is going to be the Panthers of UNI and Memphis in blue. We'll talk a little about how these teams got to where they are today, competing for the right to play IUP. Uh, so we're looking at Northern Iowa here with the Panthers. Big person to look out for is number eight, Garrett Getz, the collegiate all-star out of Fond du Lac. Wisconsin and also number 10 Gentry stack absolutely crucial in take this. a look at how these teams got here it's University of Northern Iowa Panthers and uh, they are 6-0 in the season they beat Montana State 42 20 in semis in the, in the quarters they beat St. Louis it was 78 to 5 and a big one they put up some big numbers you and I this season you see 103 7 versus University of Wisconsin Platteville that's Northern Iowa how they got here we'll talk about some of their players in just a second Take a look at the University of Memphis, the Tigers. They're 9-0, also put up some big numbers. So a win over Georgetown, 17-5. Wisconsin Whitewater, 49-17 in the quarters. 90-12 before that Tennessee Tech. Two high-scoring, high-flying teams we have here. And we're going to take a look at some of the players for these teams as we talk about the lineups. Greg had a little bit about them before, but let's start with the University of Northern Iowa. Absolutely. I mentioned it just before. Garrett Getz, the collegiate all-star out of Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Absolute crucial player. Gets to go forward for the whole forward pack, and that helps set up the backs. And when we look at this back line, it's very dangerous. But it's Gentry Stack, who's the all-star as well. D2 All-American out of Janesville, Iowa. Absolutely crucial, particularly in this win. Should be very interesting in this win. As we're going to take a look at the lineups here for the Tigers of University of Memphis. Yeah, you got number two crucial in this wind as well with a line out for in Musa Banat, grad student out of Beirut, Lebanon. Absolutely crucial to this. And if the uh, forwards are going to be functioning, it's going to come down to number 10, Connor Dempsey. He's out of St. Michael's College High School in Dublin, a very, very famous school out there which produces great players. His kicking game, his control of the game is going to be crucial to Memphis. Fantastic there. As we take a look, that is your UNI Panthers. They're going to be wearing that purple. And the blue will be the University of Memphis. Yep, yep. Referee for today's contest, Matt Lake. Matt Lake out of New York. Right, referee. We're right, joined by Beyond Engelbrecht, Mark Hewitt, and Rob Gilmore is your number four. Okay. Here we go. Memphis gets us underway here, and it is game time. UNI takes the first kickoff down there. You said run it from right to left on your screen. Ball coming out there from Randall. Get it to one of the big boys in the middle of the field. Here come University of Memphis. They've taken that ball away. Ball, a little bounce there, comes back to UNI. Oh, 
come in here for this Memphis team. A couple of changes here. Donnie Williams wear number 25. Late jersey change numbers there. Apologize, we're brought to us a little bit late. We'll do the best we can here. Ball at the back there. Quick ball taken by Caleb Schmidt. Get it out to the wing. Memphis on the run quickly here. Ball in the hands of Christian Flynn. Back across, a little pop pass coming up there into the hands of number 16, Joaquin Cardona. Memphis, quick early ball here. Coming forward, get it in the hands. Sarep Baga. Player here and a big break coming in, looking for that early try and they get it. It is number nine, Caleb Schmidt. Caleb Schmidt, first year player from Memphis, Tennessee with the Houston High School. And it was a beautifully worked try. It all came from a solid scrum from the 22 meter line. They attacked down the right hand side. They didn't quite get to the try line, but what they did, they recycled it really well. And as they got the ball back into the midfield, you can just see that little snipe there. He was looking to see where the defenders were. He noticed there's a gap and he had a nose for the try line, dived in, got his team a really, really important try right off the bat. So good man for that Caleb Schmidt. Wonderful finish, good work. Good work there from Memphis to get the sub started with five points on the board. It's just worth noting, John, you can see the flags in the background there. It is a very windy day and the wind is with Memphis and so it's on their back. So they're gonna be looking to wrap up the score uh, because it's gonna be difficult in that second half. Just as he's seen, he just took a little snipe, a couple of steps left. That brings the defender out of position. You can just see here, there's the hole and he's got the awareness and the strength to reach out and get the try. Referee in a great position to give that one. See the try score right there. Just a little sneak in there from Schmidt, played 901 rugby in high school. And I to get us going underway. Three minutes in, seven nothing already to the Tigers. The Tigers have ball in hand again as they come out. Schmidt puts it off to that left hand side. Big barrel and run coming in from the number eight. That's Harry Hagen. Chess using some forward. Schmidt getting that again. You see the fence queuing up there for you and I. You and I, a little break there. Good dummy player coming up field. Ball in one hand, looking for the pass there. Not gonna happen. Rolling back on defense are the Panthers with pick and go. Tigers ready to run from anywhere. That's Alejandro Nava taking that one in. Schmidt comes across the hands of Baga. Big pick there for Benair. Ball to the Irishman, that's Connor Dempsey. Connor Dempsey gets a little pass away, keeping the ball alive well are the Memphis, University of Memphis Tigers, but ripped away this time by the Panthers. Their first opportunity on offense here. Let's see what they can make happen here. UNI, the Panthers take that one into contact. Ball down to the ground. Sentayama, ball up there to Randall. Randall has some waiting forward. You see the power the Panthers can bring to this game. Ball back across from Randall. Look at the break now. Here comes Gentry Stack. Greg talked about him earlier. That pass goes just in behind there. Matt Lake spots it. Matt Lake sees the knock on. So it's going to be a scrum here to Memphis. But good work there. You see the explosive abilities of this Panthers team. Yeah, absolutely. You can see it from both tens. Initially, the line break came from Connor Dempsey um, from the Memphis team. And then just to counteract, you've got Gentry Stack, who just took it on a great run. He just looked really comfortable in motion there. Just unfortunate that pass went behind. But two teams here have brought some massive intensity into this first five minutes. Good look at you and I coaching staff there. And I, Zeus Ramirez, the head coach with Joe Randall. Land on that one. Scrum from Schmidt gets it up to Dempsey. A little spill there in the middle of the field. So in a better attacking position, you and I will have a scrum just outside the 22. Yeah, wonderful attacking position. Unfortunately there, just an easy knock on. At this level, you really want to be holding those balls. You probably felt that he had his eyes on the defense and he was going for a big carry, but you've got to do your number one job first. 
catch the ball, then you can get go forward. This is given maximum field position here to Northern Iowa and a real good opportunity in the midfield to stretch both sides. David Randall to put this one in, a junior from Waterloo, Iowa. He's a collegiate all-star, two-time state champion, all-state high school at Midwest Thunderbirds, so certainly a lot of rugby for him. Looks one way, goes the other. A couple of wraparounds here, looking for the space are the Panthers. Early try by the Tigers, have put him under a little pressure already. Randall digging that one out. Comes in behind, has the pot of forwards waiting there. Sidwell, the junior from Charles City, Iowa, gets it. Ball spills forward. The referee is going to come back for an initial advantage. It's going to be a penalty for an offside against the Memphis Tigers. The UNI ball. So it's interesting the first scrum. It looked like you and I were looking to attack on the left hand side. We interested to see if they go back down that channel again. They didn't have too much success, but a midfield scrum is a great opportunity to attack because the defense cannot necessarily put massive line speed on because you can see they've had to split their defenders. If they do put a lot of line speed on, there's big space in behind. That's why a center field scrum is a goal in attacking position. Pressure coming from the Tigers, but Panthers able to get this one away. Stack gets it on the wraparound, goes wide, gets the ball in the hands, well taken there by Peter Holt. Peter Holt in the contact. Tigers trying to put the pressure on. Randall finds a runner. Randall finds his number 13, and Nicholas Marker. Marker, a junior from Norwalk, Iowa. Ball comes across midfield, pot of forwards. A big hit from the big boy coming in for the Tigers. They maintain possession. Tyler Kelderman, the junior supply chain management major, has ball in hand for UNI. UNI continue on the roll here. They're inside the 22 of the Tigers. Looking for some points on the board. Referee Lake keeping order. Ball across, Gentry Stack. Noda puts up defense on Mr. Stack. Penalty against right there. Put a little late was Jason Roman, but referee late right First on the spot. One number 10 isolated. It's good defense for Memphis. Really good to see they're getting double tackles on, put a lot of pressure on. I would like to see that again. I'm not too sure he had his hands on the ball to warrant the jackal, but referee referee late was right on the spot. Got better eyes than we have, so uh, the decision stands. But overall, it was just a great defensive effort. Just as we look back here, as uh, you and I look to go. You see the jack is starting to form. Did he get his hands on the ball? Doesn't look like he's on the ball to me. Um, but with that angle and the picture painted, you can see why that was given. And remember, is when you're jacking, it's important. You've got to be on the ball, not on the body. Certainly on the body there. Cardona to put this one in. Ball comes down to the big fella, the senior Donnie Williams, biomedical engineering major from California City, California. Driven back in the tackle this time is number four, Alejandro Nava. Ball across, Memphis on the move. They're at their own 40 meter line, showing that pace. Sarah Baga, the senior from Calgary, Canada. Pre med major, University of Memphis. Ball taken in by Connor Dempsey. St. Michael's College player looking for an obvious box kick here. Ball blocked by UNI. Ball in UNI's hands. They're going to keep on the move here. Big number five, Elliot Sinwell takes that one in. Sinwell recycles the ball. This penalty against Memphis. UNI is going to go quick. UNI known for their desire to run. They get it up to the big man, Kelderman. Kelderman shows that head of hair, shows a turn of pace. Kelderman moving his way inside the 22 again. Players trying to jackle this one. Not that time. Referee Lake on the spot. Ball's going to come from Randall. Cross field here. Gentry finds a runner. Ben Hager. And a runner's coming. Running a little on the angle here. Trying to find it. Pick number six, Dylan Johnson. Dylan Johnson, the junior from Norwalk, Iowa. Pick and go here. You and I. Strong of the Panthers. Panthers a little pick and go again, using this size that they have. Too much. 
<clears throat> See what Gentry Stack wants to do eventually as Cooper Isaacson goes in. Ball ripped away there by Memphis. However, Memphis, great turnover. They're inside their own try zone. So they're going to have to do a little work here, clear the ball. Ball squirts out. It is at the try line. If they drive this player back in, it's going to work out very well in their advantage. Memphis puts that one down. I believe it's going to be a five-meter scrum. It will. Correct on the laws there, Craig. No, absolutely. But I'll tell you what, Memphis has work and the defensive breakdown is absolutely brilliant. They're doing some great work. They're putting maximum pressure here at the breakdown. And you can see here, just look at the ability. Yes, we're going to see the snipe soon. Really, really good work. There, you can see the play was isolated. Look at that wide base. He's really low. He stays on his feet the whole time. That is an absolute textbook turnover there. And they fortunately, they couldn't clear the lines. They're still under a lot of pressure. Ball nearly ripped away there. Did that come out cleanly? One way or another, it came back to you and I. So you and I has the ball. They're going to retrieve this one, Randall. Looks the other way to Gentry Stack. Gentry Stack shows. Gentry Stack nearly faked out a player with a dummy pass there. We're going to come back around to Randall. Randall's going to take a hit. They're about seven meters out. Tenacious defense for the Tigers. The Tigers really making UNI work for this one. Ball just a little wider. Stack goes to the wing. Cut back in. Rand is not going to find it. Randall. It's a ball up there to Cooper Isaacson. Denver High School, that's Denver, Iowa. Ball up to the number eight there. There he gets, talked about him earlier. In the beginning, in the warm up of the game here, little step inside. Can they crack this defense? That's number 13, Nicholas Marker. Nobody shy of running here on this UNI team, and good defense coming in as Kelderman. Not surprisingly an accomplished wrestler, but ripped away again by the Tigers inside their own zone. Just have to try to get this ball away. Blocked again by UNI into the try zone. It is in UNI hands. This is wild stuff we have going on here. Looked like it might have been knocked on there. It was not. Referee on the spot. Quick pick and go over the line they go. Try awarded UNI. And a series of unusual circumstances leads to a UNI try. We may be tied up soon. <laughs> Absolutely. I tell you what, great for both teams. Memphis' defense has been absolutely wonderful. They've been turning it over. But you've got to give credit to UNI. They kept possession under a lot of pressure. And it was actually twice in this, this last five minutes where Memphis turned over the ball, but they couldn't get the next exit play. And that just happened there. They turned over. It was a wonderful turnover at the breakdown. Lots of pressure on. They just couldn't get the kick away. They just needed to be a little bit calmer, set the platform, and then clear their lines. And unfortunately, from a Memphis point of view, they just couldn't do it. So it's there's a lot of positives, but ultimately, they conceded a try. You could see there the kick. There was no height on it. There was good pressure on. And then the, uh, the Panthers... They just got back to work again. They stayed controlled and they've got themselves back with the conversion going over to 7 0. We have got a wonderful battle on our hands here. We are tied up. This is fascinating. Both these teams love to run, love to have a go. So we're going to have an exciting, exciting matchup on our hands here. Great, great, great. Okay, criminal justice major from Tripoli, Iowa. Seven all, just under 15 minutes gone. Division two national semifinal in National Collegiate Rugby. Winner will take on Indiana University of Pennsylvania on Sunday here in Houston. All coming to you on the Rugby Network. Panthers, UNI inside the 40 meter line. Take down that kick, Randall. Find Stack, Stack finds a big boy in the midfield. Can't miss Kelderman. Kelderman makes some ground. Stack. There's a little arcing run that draws some players in there. Just holds that pass. Comes in well. Randall, a little slower ball this time. Ball coming across here. Randall takes it on his own. Got to watch himself not to get isolated. Player rolls away. 
Well done, Tigers. Tigers steps into that distributor role. Break a little ground this time. Looks like it was Sinwell. Tight five forwards really combining on their runs here for UNI. Look at the soft hands on Keldon there to get it to the outside for UNI. UNI finding some room. Good tackle coming in from Baga. 12 active as can be for this Memphis Tigers team. Randall up to the man that can do it all. Kelderman, third place in JV World Wrestling as well, 2019. Gentry stack. Looks like he might kick that one, but hangs on to it. Gets it to Luke Fairchild. Jacksonville, Florida. Playing his college at rugby in Iowa. Little step there across the 40 meter line. Okay, excuse me. Comes in over that one, Kelderman. He is working his way through this Memphis team. Nice break there. There's the one they were looking for. That's Ben Hager. He's across the 22. Can he find it? He is headed towards the try zone, but he may be isolated there. Players coming in and clean that one up. Well done there by Northern Iowa. They're on the move now. There's some room on the outside. They're going to keep it tight, however. Looking for the line and going over is number 13, Nicholas Marker. And try awarded UNI takes the lead. Great work there, UNI. That was a fantastic try. There was a close to 20 phases in that play, all the way from her own half. They worked it all the way up. They were steady. They picked him go when they needed to. They moved the ball when they needed to. I'll tell you what, Kelderman, number three, he what is a having a game. He has been really, really busy. And then when the space starts to arrive, you've got Stack, who's really put people in space there. Then number 13, Marco. Look at that step and then the ability to get over. Bit of a fumble as that ball started to go down, but it looked like he retrieved it just in time. Great Alex runner. Did he get it in time? Oh, he absolutely yeah, did. Good and work he got there. the put down. That was a very, very good try at any level of rugby. Love it, Kelderman. That kick is good. We're at 14 to 7. Kelderman, 5'10, 300. Wrestler. Just shifty feet, good hands, putting those little tip passes. What a player we've seen so far, only 15 minutes in. His carrying's been great, but as you said there, the initial break came from his soft hands. But, um, put the break on the left-hand side for UNI. That was a really good try, because that came from the initial restart. They really built those phases together. Very, very impressive stuff. UNI will receive this restart. Memphis trailing the scoreboard now but we can see plenty of firepower coming from them as well memphis push one down inside the 22 well handled by uni will show try score just head straight forward as marker good uni just moves the players just show that ball at the front of these pods so it puts the defenders of two minds sometime randall coming out to the left hand side to Dylan Johnson's hands. Randall looking for some runners, finds a willing participant, Broke. He has been excellent so far. Memphis on a little bit more defense now than they have been all game here is Kelderman, the commentator's favorite at the moment. Watch for the Kelder cam later in the game. Ball comes across there. Randall, little soft pass. Gentry puts in a little soft pass. Randall comes in, finds some room on this right-hand side, gets it. That's Isaacson. Isaacson made a couple of great breaks so far as the junior. Over the 40-meter line they go. Ball into the tail there. Penalty against Memphis. A lot of pressure coming on him right now. Don't roll away. So you and I having a good run of play right now. Yeah, really, really good possession. But it comes back down to their detail and their basics. So what they do when they catch the ball, and you briefly mentioned it earlier, Johnny, is that when the carriers take it into contact, it's not always just direct. One, it has momentum because they're always going forward. But just look at the little bit of footwork and a little bit of ball movement. That allows the attacker to find that little bit of an edge. And then that's when you start to get the ascendancy. Because one yard, that means that the defense have to go back two yards to go forward. And it's just momentum, momentum, momentum. So that's what they're doing really well. The carriers are great, and it's the detail in that carry, which is impressive. 
you and I to put this one in. Randall. Ball at Gary. Gets his feet. Squirts out the back. Goes out to Gentry. They were looking to go to the right, but they have to go back to the left. A little spin move there from Santoyama. Santoyama, sophomore from Waverly, Iowa. Played for WSR Rugby Club. High school rugby in Iowa these days. Randall has some runners off to the right. Elderman just comes in to clean that one up. Randall goes off to the right-hand side again. They've got some numbers here. Nice little break coming back inside from UNI. UNI finding some good spaces in this Memphis defense. Randall takes it in. He's got a runner out wide. Just puts it in behind him. That could have been another try. Franzen getting driven towards the touchline. Randall gets that one up. Gets rid of it. Referee whistles. Going to bring us back. Let's see what his ball is here. It's a penalty against the Tigers. And here goes UNI going quick over the line. Here's Matt Lake going to award this one. Matt Lake indeed is going to give Gentry Stack a try here at the National Collegiate Rugby Division II semifinal. Well deserved for the number 10. Yeah, Gentry Stack, he's had a good game. He's really controlling proceeding. He's known when it's given to the forwards off nine, but he's also equally handy giving it into space and also running himself. He's a good, good player with a lot of skills. They call him a triple threat, run, pass, and kick. And there, it's just rugby IQ. He just knew that the penalty was there. Memphis were not back 10, so the worst thing would be happened is he gained an extra 10 yards before he would have taken to the five meter line. But just look at this rugby IQ, taps and goes, and then he's got the footwork and the strength to burrow over get the try he's leading his team really well but just in the uh, backfield I saw that marker he's a strong player it looks like he might be a little bit injured that could be a slight worry for you and I it could be as they're looking strong here the player just getting attended to as you said he's not going to take that kick nonetheless Pushes it across the front. No try there, so we're at 19 to seven. Hold back while this player gets attended to. We'll take a look at that try one more time while we wait here, Craig. And it's just the building, it's the pressure. They were continually moving the ball forward and just a stack there, moves that ball onto Marker. Just look at the right foot step, and then he just powers through. And what I really liked about this, the ball bobbled, but he still had the awareness to catch it and get it down. No knock on there, wonderful try. He's had a good, strong game, Marker there. And then this is where the penalty was given. Stack gets up, good rugby IQ. He has all rights to go from the mark. Memphis are not even back. Half the players weren't even looking, and that's just an opportunist try. But that comes from someone who knows the game inside out. Certainly well deserved by Stack there. Take another look at the try earlier from the University of Memphis Tigers. Your man Caleb Schmidt just barrels right over, finds a little space there. That was in the opening moments of the game, but very much UNI since then. Yeah, Memphis just can't get their hands on the ball. So every time they're kicking the UNI, it's just possession after possession. So they've just been starved of possession right now. So from a Memphis point of view, there's no need to panic. You just got to play in the right areas of the field, look to get the ball. But one thing it would be said, when you are defending, it's very, very tiring. Over the shoulder of Calderbin, we have Coach Jesus Ramirez, University of Northern Iowa, joined by Joe Randall, Cable Bolan. Coaching staff for this Panthers team doing a wonderful job. Good players in hand, so. Play smart, play hard. Okay. Those two things are taking us to the end. We believe. Okay? 
Play hard. There's a reason you guys are here. There's a reason you guys are here. Okay? Play hard. Settle in. We're going to get this. Okay? Settle in. Basic rug. Basic rug. Basic rug. Hey, those rugs, we got to be there. Seal on the way down. First man, get that guy off. We don't All right, well, the player gets tended to in the field. We're going to step aside for a break. We'll be right back with more Division II semifinal action. Thorn products pre and post workout to maximize my recovery, muscle growth, and make sure that I can be my best self on the field. Thorn's a supplement company that I can trust. They're NSF certified for sports, so I know that I can take this and know what's in their product. I use their protein, get my muscles nice and big. The products I use with Thorn have minimal ingredients. They're high quality, they're clean, they're batch tested, tastes amazing, and it made everything in my recovery and my performance better. If you're not recovering off the pitch, you're not your best self on the pitch. Thorn gets me there. We're back here. We're taking a look at referee Matt Lake having a chat with some of the Memphis boys. We'll just listen in. Good in rugby here to see the, the referees just having a chat with the players. It'll open it up. Matt Lake, a, a very good and well regarded referee, always happy to discuss with the players what's going on and get their feedback. And we're going to step aside again. We're we'll just waiting for this player to get looked at. We'll be right back. We got the hits, we got the kicks. Oh, God, that looked way too good. Oh! The passes, the athletes, and the fans. We got the pride and the passion. All we need is you. Since 1979, we've been searching for perfection. We've been thinking, sketching, and designing. We've been building, assembling, and strengthening. We've been cutting, shaping, and painting. We've created strength and beauty time and again. Our machines are made for one thing, the perfect hit. We are the crouch. 
We are the bind. We are the set. We are the squeeze. We are the hit. We are Rhino. Home of the scrum. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Welcome back to Houston. We are at Sabercats Stadium in this beautiful Space City where the University of Northern Iowa leads Memphis in this National Collegiate Rugby D2 semifinal. Player has been attended to. It has been number 13. Nicholas Marker taking on the field. Seems to be okay. Look. Looks like a hip injury. And he's down. He's been taken on the field. Good medical staff here. So we're ready to get underway again after that dentry stack try. Here, so we're gonna make sure that we can play We'll get the number for you. We start. Marker. Okay. Yeah. And it's referee Lake I ready to get us underway know. here again. Um, Connor Dempsey. We can just, we can go, they have St. Michael's College graduate. Staff, this is, yeah, I'm hoping so. We good? Okay. Get us underway. Referee Lake confers with his partners there and we are going to be underway here again in just a second and it is like a little short one there here come the Panthers Panthers Randall get to the try score stack stack unafraid to run at all times as most of this team is Randall comes across coming across Isaacson Takes that one into contact. Cross they come again. UNI still on the move. 23 minutes gone in the first half here. Winner of this, of course, plays Indiana University of Pennsylvania on Sunday. Randall looking for a run. Randall comes out to the right-hand side. They have a quick ball. People are ready to run at all times on this UNI team. You've been saying a lot of defense for this Tigers team. If that one gets knocked out. Get back here through the scrum for University of Memphis. When UNI is doing here. a long placement, it's the tackler's feet that's the offside line. They have to get back behind the tackler's feet. Okay. Time off. Referee, it's gonna put the time off here. We just have to wait a minute here. So when they're doing the long placement on a tackle, 
the, the, the tackler's feet is way out there. His feet are the offside line. You're all consistently in front of it. Because of that long placement, it has to be further. Okay. Wait, he's rolling out. Okay. We, we, we need, so. We're going to need to refill Okay, them. thanks. So, yeah, so when I'm talking about that, that offside line, that's where the difference is between what you're seeing and what I'm seeing. Okay. So that long placement, especially so forwards, notice where that feet is, yeah. up your back's out. Yes, sir. Sorry. Thank you. We're just waiting on an EMS uh, attendant here at the field to make sure they're attending to the injured player right now. There's a couple people getting them off. We need a return of EMS players. So we're, gonna, we're just going to probably step aside here for another second and bring you back to more Division II National Collegiate Rugby semifinal action in just a few minutes. I use Thorn products pre and post workout to maximize my recovery, muscle growth, and make sure that I can be my best self on the field. Thorn's a supplement company that I can trust. They're NSF certified for sports, so I know that I can take this and know what's in their product. I use their protein, get my muscles nice and big. The products I use with Thorn have minimal ingredients. They're high quality, they're clean, they're batch tested, tastes amazing, and it made everything in my recovery Are we sure? better. If you're not recovering off the pitch, you're not your best self on the pitch. Thorn gets me there. We're back into Space City, Houston, a beautiful venue for National Collegiate Rugby. Collegiate Rugby Championship 15's weekend for the men. Women here last weekend, great games brought to you on the Rugby Network. It is going to be a scrum here for the Memphis Tigers. Everything's sorted. We want to make sure everybody is safe so the medical staff attends what they do. Memphis on offense for the first time in a little while here and get a penalty. We'll see what they decide to do as the ball is in Cale Schmidt's hands. Schmidt, the lone try scorer for the Memphis Tigers. Hands the ball back. They're going to push this one forward. Take a line out a little further downfield as long as this one makes it in the touch, which it does. So just inside the 22 of the Panthers is going to be a Tigers line out. They really need a good offensive stand here. They've been allowed the ball for a little while, and they're, they're a talented team, Craig. Absolutely. They've been starved with possession. The Memphis team has. But they can't get any better possession than this. Although it's a little bit tricky with the wind and the line out, this is absolutely important moments for Memphis to wrestle back some momentum into this game. One here at the front. Remscheid at front, takes that one up. Doesn't quite go the height they would probably want. Ball up in the air, so Panthers pushing on that one. Memphis Tigers trying to get a mall together here. Jeffrey Lake says that's once. You're going to have to use it eventually. They're going to try to break off, but Kelderman, the man with the plan, Kelderman there, gets a ball in, and it looks like they are taken down into touch. Great work by UNI to get the ball back there on offense again. And looking to go quick. Matt Lake says, eh, let's come back. We're going to have a line out here. So number three, Kelderman, the wrestler, absolutely yeah, comes through that line out, yeah, causes you. absolute chaos. That man can't often hide. He's a big fella, but just look at that power. Straight through the middle, completely legal. That disrupts the ball, and then that gives the line out to you and I. Something else, Kelderman. Another ball coming in here. It's gone back. It's you and I haven't chased it in their own try zone. We'll see what the referee's call is here. Maybe a scrum, and it is for this Tigers team. But by the blink of an eye, as we were just taking a look at Kelderman there. So we're going to have a scrum for the University of Memphis Tigers as you and I was forced to bring that ball in their own try zone. So this is the attacking position that the University of Memphis Tigers will be looking for. Coach Dave Hill, Phil Beck, Brian Colbridge, Tony Brooks, Dr. Richard Cole. In this is exactly just an important 26 and a half minutes into this game. Trailing 19 to 7. So we take a look at Connor Dempsey. And Schmidt gets the ball in. That Hagen's feet. Hagen looking to make it himself. Hagen has a try line. Hagen is over and try awarded. And this game is back on fire. Just a touch of the ball. You see what the Tigers can do. Absolutely. It looks like Memphis 
after that break, it's about a 10 minute break, so essentially at half time, it looks like they managed to reconnect with their coaches. They got some understanding from each other, and just everything since this restart has been all Memphis from the scrum to the line out. And now they got that dominant scrum in the five meter channel, and then Hagen just powers away there from the scrum. Absolutely brilliant work. Number eight, you can see how he disconnects. He's got the fen. Just look how he keeps his legs pumping. Stat can't quite get that tackle. And he makes sure that he gets two arms across that ball. There was no way he was going to lose that. Brilliant work from Harry Hagen. Dempsey, the grad student line just went up. Computer science major. Puts that one through. We're at 19 14, just five points. An unconverted try in it now. As we're rolling to 28 minutes gone in this first half. Plenty of rugby here to come, but Memphis, the Tigers, bear their teeth. You could just see he gets through that initial tackle there. Number seven, Ben Hogan, couldn't get it. And then once he was three, he got his legs pumping, powered over the try, and got a much needed try from Memphis. Very well deserved. Yeah, thank you. Long kick from the Panthers. Quick kick coming back from the Tigers. Well handled, they're outside their own half there. It's really flowing with Mason Burr's hands. Mason Burr into contact. The Tigers really driving on this one. It comes up into the hands of one of the Tigers. Referee says that's fine. Alejandro Nava took that one in the sophomore from Memphis, went to Christian Brothers High School. Tigers on the move now. Tackle coming in from Hager. Waiting runners, forward pod there, driving the ball in. Schmidt, a little wider this time, pass out the back, opens up some space for him, and number 13, Jason Roman comes in. Roman gets about 10 meters out. Without the ball for a while, now with the ball, you can see this Tigers team just dangerous. Ball up there to Cardona, big hit coming in from Broke. Broke, using my own name a little bit. Ball up there again for the Tigers. They're working their way towards the tribe line. That's Cyrus Gonzalez. Gonzalez is at the line, diving over. Another try here for this Memphis team. And the tide has turned. The Memphis Tigers tied up. What a huge momentum shift for Memphis, and it's all well deserved. It came initially from a very good clearing kick. It was down there, so that got them into UNI's half. And then from there, it started to build, and the pressure was absolutely excellent there from Memphis. Just as we look back, as it gets closer to the try line, you can see he was inches away, and then it was just a snipe. He just saw the smallest of gaps just as we're coming in here. Just watch, there was not really any space there. You and I probably needed to get a little bit lower. For the first time this half, Tyler Kelderman got caught out, and then he just dived that there. Number four, Nava gets over and gets a really good try, and that has absolutely blown this game wide open. Pretty straightforward shot here for Dempsey to take the lead. Third lead change of the game here. It is Memphis, 21, University of Northern Iowa Panthers, 19, National Collegiate Rugby semifinal. Winner plays IUP on Sunday. Memphis raising their hand right now. Let's see if the Panthers can change that momentum. You know, just the UNI defenders just got themselves way too high. When you're on your own goal line, you need to be down. You need to also be like in a sprinter, three-point start, much what like you see in football, just to ready to stop anything. They were just too upright, got a little bit complacent, and they conceded the try. But well played from Narva to see the gap. Memphis trying to get that head of steam back right away. Take down the restart. Here, there's Dempsey. Dempsey spots some space in behind. Directly to one of the Panthers players. Panthers, ball in hand again. See if they can make something this is out of this. As Mason Purr takes that one in. Purr, the first year player to Waterloo, Iowa. Tigers trying to turn this one over and draw a penalty to UNI. That's 
tell you what, momentum in rugby is such a crucial thing. We saw in the first half, well, the first 20 minutes, 25 minutes, it was all you and I. Now it is all Memphis. Everything is going their way. It's all down to that momentum. Just look at the pressure they're putting on at the ruck. Absolutely causing chaos. So you and I just can't get any any kind of purchase on the ball whatsoever. That lake's right there. He sees the infringement. A good kick. And look at his field position now. Both these teams just thrive with that momentum. Right now, it's with the Tigers. Tigers line out outside the Panthers, 22. Ball up, taken away by the Panthers. Good work there, Isaacson. However, can't handle it, goes back to the Tigers. Tigers. Lost the initial lineup, but get the offensive play here as the ball comes up to McKinsey. Jalen McKinsey puts the ball out to Dempsey. Dempsey gets tackled. Pass was a little messy. You and I trying to rip that one away. Going to come back to the Tigers. Tigers, long looper there. Moving themselves backward just a little bit at the moment. As Remscheid has to take hold of that. Near barreling his way forward. He's near the touch line. He's got to keep himself in. Now they come back across, they go out the back. It's Dempsey, Dempsey looking for some runners, get the ball to the try score of Hagen. Good pass it to the outside, coming wide here. Looking to spread the field, they get the ball to Elazar. Elazar, take it in. Schmidt bounces one in front of his forward, but picked up, well driven back is Gonzalez. Going across, you can see it, Dempsey directing some traffic there. Coming straight in is Alejandro Nava. Bonier gets it, Remscheid. Coming across, Caleb Schmidt shows. Caleb Schmidt has been in the tri zone once. He's in again. Caleb Schmidt puts another five on the board. They push it to 26. Do Memphis Tigers with kick to come. We have been blessed with some tries in this match, and that is right up there as well. This time, Memphis, momentum, we've talked about it, but you create your own momentum. And there's a brilliant play here from the forwards with their strong carries, and then moving that ball into the wider channels. And then that's for the second time today, you've got Smith who saw the gap and went for it, and he had the ability to finish it off. Some really, really good stuff here for Memphis. That was a high quality try. Schmidt, just a first year player. Set us his notes, you can't wait for Christmas. Hope he remembers today a bit more than he remembers Christmas. A couple of good tries there for the young man. Absolutely. It's Christmas Day for me watching rugby like this. This is a very, very high quality game from two very good teams. And it's just really well worked tries. And it, the defense isn't being particularly bad at all. In fact, it's been great. That shows you how well the attack have had to unlock the defense with their movements, with their passing, uh, and then with uh, eventually with their snipes. But this momentum shift has been seismic. Dempsey takes his time, lines it up. Pushes that one just wide, so it's 26 to 19. A converted try in at University of Northern Iowa. We'll kick this one off. We're about four and a little bit minutes left to go on the game clock, maybe a little bit of time. It's always been a, it's been a game of quarters so far. You, you and I dominated the initial Opening quarter, and then now Memphis has come back with a vengeance. Um, now it's been interesting to see how this one develops. Ball, did it go 10? Referee says, let's play. UNI, ball in hand, trying to get something going before the end of the half here. Converted try would tie it up. Ball comes off from Randall. Need to get a little bit of their mojo back here. It does the UNI Panthers. After a sustained period of defense, the Fairland through the defensive line they go. Players ball on hand, must release, do eventually. Randall digging. Ball across. There's the man, Kelderman. Kelderman makes his ground. Free Lake telling the Memphis players they have to release that ball. Great communication. Gentry Stack gets it out to his number eight. They make a little break there. Get the ball in the hands of Luke Fairchild. Luke Fairchild. Pella High School works their way forward. They're right around the 22. Shifty feet again from Hager. 
Hager's 5'8", 150, but isn't able to get through the line. There was some good footwork as the flanker. Cross take come again. Kelderman, little spin move on the ground. Kelderman recycles that ball. They're at the 22. Need to find some ground here. Three minutes on the game clock in this first half. National Collegiate Rugby Division II semifinal. Quick ball here. Working their way out a little wider, looking for that space. Sometimes the inside is opened up for them. Randall slows this one down. Waiting forward, working his way into that Tigers defense. There's some space out here. If they can get it, Gentry stacked. Gentry stacked, takes it himself. Gentry stacked, driving his way forward. Gets to the ground eventually. Well done. Build some momentum. Randall finds some runners. Randall. Gets it up to that waiting pot of forwards as ever. Cooper Isaacson, the hooker, stepping in. Nearly distributed the ball himself, but gets it back to Randall. Kelderman makes a little bit of ground. Working their way across, using the same side of the field. Tigers trying to drive through this one. Can they turn it over? Working hard at it, but it comes back up into Randall's hands. Randall, you can do it, I can do it. Says to the other scrum half, Schmidt, I'm going to take the opportunity now. My try, five points, kick to come. We can go into the half tied up. This is incredible rugby. Let's not forget, this all came from the restart, what just hit the 10 meter line, and you and I managed to get the ball back. It all came back from there. So it was two and a half minutes, close to 20 phases, mud once again, and then they get over. This is very, very high quality rugby. You can see the pressure that Memphis is putting on the ruck. They really are going for it, but if you do that, it tends to leave numbers in and around the ball. If you just look at that shot there, you can see a lot of players in and around the ball. That means as soon as someone finds an edge, and that's exactly what Randall done there, that's when he can sneak over and get the try. But very impressive. That came from the restart, and they went through the whole half. Classic rugby there from both sides. Randall the kicker, I think I said Gentry Stack was kicking a little earlier, so all credits, Mr. Randall here, the movement and exercise science major. Certainly moved well there. Says he can remember every line from every movie. Pretty bold claim as he puts that one through. Two more points and we are tied up with little time to go in the half here. We have quite a game, lead changes, tied it up. This has been a fascinating 40 minutes. It really has, two excellent teams, obviously clearly well coached good skill level and we're, we're in for a treat here but I don't think there's probably still points left in this half let alone the full game so this is really exciting. It certainly is. Kick down to the 22, UNI, a little Bouncing into each other there. It's just accidentally collided. I didn't really see much in that, but penalty there from referee Lake. Yeah, the four points might still be in this half, and it looks like they're going to go for the three just to try and get that lead going into the, into the half time. Just looking back there, you're right, it looked fairly innocuous. Uh, was there a defender there trying to make a tackle? I'm not so sure, but the referee was right on the mark. He's made some great decisions this half. He's been he's been everywhere, right on the spot. So referee's decision is final. But yeah, I just felt there was a couple more points left in this game, and it looks in this half, not this game. And it looks like um, number ten, Connor Dempsey. Connor Dempsey, has got an opportunity. Just when we look back there, it looked fairly innocuous. There is defenders around there. It is a semi-final match. Um, yeah, it's a tough one for UNI, but you can see how that was given. Yeah, certainly referee leg in the spot there. Reasonable Dempsey, probably the final action of this first half. Eyes it up. He's been solid so far as Dempsey, the Dublin-born Tiger. Launches that one. And that one has not found touch, and UNI is going to run it from inside their own five-meter line. This is guts. This is excitement right here. The Panthers are still on the ball. They want to play, except for the wisest one in the field. David Randall is going to kick that one in a touch. And now all tied up at 26. Everything to play for. We are going to throw down just a second to Tyler Deutsch coming up on the touchline. One of the coaches. And 
Siler, what do you got? I'm here on the uh, Northern Iowa sideline with Coach. Obviously, you guys had a hot start. Unfortunately, one of your try scorers got injured there. And then, obviously, they picked up the pace coming at it. What did you take away from that? Um, just that we are going to make sure to fix the little mistakes. Um, as you can tell, once we play a lot of phase ball, we're able to march the ball down, retain possession, and that's really what we've got to focus on. What's the biggest thing you're going to be telling your guys going into the second half, what not to do, what to do? Uh, relax, have fun. Really, that's that's really about it. The guys are tense right now, but once we start having some fun, this when we start opening up the scoring a little bit more. Well, the fans are loving it, and so are the people at home. Thank you, Coach. Awesome. Thank have you. a great second half. Thank you. Back up to you guys. All right, we're going to step away. We're going to be back. It's all tied up. We're going to play for our second half coming up in just a few minutes. I use Thorn products pre and post workout to maximize my recovery, muscle growth, and make sure that I can be my best self on the field. Thorn's a supplement company that I can trust. They're NSF certified for sports, so I know that I can take this and know what's in their product. I use their protein, get my muscles nice and big. The products I use with Thorn have minimal ingredients. They're high quality, they're clean, they're batch tested, tastes amazing, and it made everything in my recovery and my performance better. If you're not recovering off the pitch, you're not your best self on the pitch. Thorn gets me there. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats. Welcome back to H-Town. We're in Houston for National Collegiate Rugby's Collegiate Rugby Championship 15, Houston 2023. It is all tied up between the University of Northern Iowa and University of Memphis. What a first half, John Broker, I am here with the contact coach, Craig Wilson, for this one. We are gonna throw it down to Mr. Tyler Doidge, who is on the sideline with the University of Memphis coach before we get the second half underway. 
Thanks, John. Yes, I'm here on the Memphis sideline with Coach. Obviously, you guys had a sprint of tries in that last half. What did you say to your team when we took a little bit of time to, in order to get that momentum up? So the whole issue was our line speed on defense. In the beginning of the game when we scored, we had really good line speed, put a lot of pressure on them, and that created our opportunities to score. Then we kind of got soft and slow on our line speed, and they came back on us. So then we picked it back up, and then we came back. It's really simple. If we play fast defense, we have the opportunities, and we score, and we're going to win. I mean, obviously, a nail-biting first half. We're really looking forward to the second. What did you tell your guys in order to keep that pace? Well, we talked about the line speed and then also some concerns about the wind. Now we're going to be going into the wind and uh, watching out for kicks, playing kind of a different defense. So we'll see how that goes in the second half. Well, everyone's on the edge of their seat. Thank you, Coach, and have a great second half. Back up to you guys. Thank you, Tyler. Well, you were talking. We got going with a massive second half start here. Ball kicked this time down by UNI. They had the first run of play. There was all momentum. All tied up, Everton to play for. Winner plays Indiana University of Pennsylvania, the Crimson Hawks, on Sunday. These teams wanted. Craig, I don't even know which team to start with. Like, what are they talking about at halftime here? Well, you can see you and I in the huddle was talking about possession. Possession, possession, possession. They did them massive favors in the first half, but now they have a decision to make. Because you and I do have the win. They can kick a lot more should they want to. And we found all day today that the team who's kicked well in the win has been the team what has progressed forward. So it'd be interesting to see if you and I change their tactics or keep the ball in hand. Ball in hand now to the big fella, Kelderman. Kelderman takes it forward. Couldn't quite dive on that one. You said the wind took a little bit there. They're going out wide, looking to get it into space. Knocked forward, unfortunately, there by one of the UNI players. Just a little unlucky. Yeah, but it's that, you know, whoever's had the ball and had momentum has had such good fortune in that first half. We plan to see more of that, I am sure, in this second half. Referee Matt Lake doing a great job so far. Both of these teams, two minutes in the second half. Look at Randall there. He's scored a try. He has done a wonderful job directing his team around in conjunction with Gentry Stack. The 9-10 combinations for both these teams, very important. Yeah, they've been absolutely influential, and they're going to be critical in this last 40 minutes. Randall comes to the back, puts one in behind, little chip forward. There's space back there. It's a race. They're going to be under pressure. Ball goes into the try zone. Touchdown by Memphis. Just a little too far, so it's going to be a goal line dropout. I really Dempsey doesn't get that one five, so mistake there. It's going to be a scrum here for the Panthers, and that's big. Yeah, real big mistake, but it came from a good hit through there by Stack. Really important. And you can see it's a really big end zone here in Houston. Big end zone means there's got a lot more room for error. So even if you kick it into the end zone, the opposition puts it down exactly what happens here. The best you're going to get is you have to drop it out into the wind from your own goal line. It's absolutely brutal. And then it gets, goes from bad to worse here. They try to force it. It becomes a five-meter scrum. And here we go. This is one of the best attacking positions on any rugby field. Brooke and Kelderman versus Bonier and Gonzalez. Scrum to UNI. They go off the back. Randall gets it to Gentry Stack. Nearly intercepted. Ball knocked down. Was it intentional? Let's see what referee Matt Lake has to say here. I believe these players are playing for nothing at the moment. We're going to come back and see what referee Lake decides happened there. My, yeah, my initial thoughts was it was a genuine attempt for a, for a catch. There was two hands there. He had all rights to the ball. Should he have led with one hand? And when we just look back on the hit, it was a great attacking opportunity. He just read it really well. It looks like he went for that catch. I don't think that angle does it too much justice because you can only see the one hand. I think this is a much better angle. Great work from the camera crew. It's a genuine attempt to catch that ball. I think a scrum is a fair decision here. Now, if we were playing sevens, that would probably be a yellow card and yeah, a penalty, to try. but it's 15s. There's a bit more leeway. There's a genuine attempt there. Great move by you and I. Gentry Stack was in the try zone if that went to hand. So good defense to stop it up, but another ball here. Battle at the back there, Randall and Schmidt. We're gonna have a penalty against Schmidt, and they're gonna go quick. Gentry Stack, ball in hand, he's been in the try zone. He's powering his way over. Gentry Stack at the line. Gentry Stack, thrilled, team thrilled as well. Five points on the board. The tip block at halftime has been unlocked. 
first five to the Panthers. And that's two tries now from UNI. Good rugby IQ. A quick tap from a penalty, and they've caught Memphis out. Memphis really should have learned their lesson first time. This time it was Randall who passed the ball on to Stack. And look at the power of the young man. He had a lot to do there, but he got over. But that all came from that quick tap penalty. So that's twice now that's happened. Memphis need to get a grip of that one. Gentry Stack, the senior. Waverly Shell Rock Rugby in high school, accounting and finance major. Kick for Randall from a little bit of a tougher angle this time. Pushes this one just a little wide, just five points in and now. This action packed semifinal. Yeah, good work there again for Gentry Stack. He's got himself down, but all came, came from that quick tap penalty, as we said there, just showing really good awareness of rugby IQ. Kickoff coming here, you see Connor Dempsey, the grad student studying computer science in Memphis, pushes one down just inside the 22. Well taken by the Panthers. Panthers Good work keeping their feet until support arrives. Pressure coming on stack right there. They're going to have to keep this one alive inside the 22. Memphis, you can see, trying to put this on, but a high tackle creeps in. So a lock there for the Panthers. Panthers going to go quick. Gentry Stack happy to run. Gentry Stack gets it to Kelderman. Kelderman just inside the 40. Randall takes a step, draws in the defender. Working their way around here. Good work to bring it in from Santo Yama. Randall. Back again to Randall. Just a little wider this time. You can see the next pod out there. The next shape in this UNI offense as Isaacson really plays. Is much bigger than his size, does the hooker, Cooper Isaacson. They just often they go quick off of these, even inside their own zone as UNI. It's a definite tactic, and they're ready to go all the time. As that man, Elliot Sinwell, takes it in. Randall this time pushes it downfield. You can see that on rushing challenge coming from UNI. It goes across there to Caleb Schmidt. Caleb Schmidt puts a pass in. Teammate looking for the run there. That's Dempsey. Dempsey hangs one up in the air, comes down to UNI. We're right at midfield. Panther ball. Tigers trying to drive this one away. Penalty against the Tigers again. Player coming in off their feet. Referee Matt Lake right on the spot. Looks like they just decided to take a little bit of heat out of the game. So that's that's been five penalties so far that Memphis has given away this half. That's a little bit worrying. And if I was the uh, UNI captain, I might be having a little conversation uh, with the referee to say, look, how many penalties, sir? Um, but UNI, look, you said it earlier. They're looking to tap and go. They're looking to keep momentum. And they're really going to back their fitness and their skill level. And then Memphis have just got to, like they did in the first half, they've just got to weather the storm, wrestle back momentum, and it's got to start with this line-out because these line-outs are not easy in this win. Colby Wiederholt, wing senior from Van Meter, Iowa. Ball bouncing, winds up in the hands of the Tigers, but push it back to the hands of the Panthers. In our all-jungle catch semifinal here, a ball going back and forth, referee Lake it back to an original infraction of not straight to be a scrum for the Memphis Tigers. There's probably a reason why you and I are deciding to tap and go because the line outs are an absolute lottery right now. The wind just favors no one because it's coming right down the length of the field. Both teams are in jeopardy. So maybe the tap and goes or scrums are, are the way forward. As you saw there, that line out was a bit messy. It's just a tough day for the hookers. Caleb Schmidt. Gets the ball on pressure coming from UNI this time, but a little too early in coming up. So referee Lake sees it. Schmidt wants to return the favor. Thought about going quick. 
nearly touched to his foot there. Yeah, I think that was pretty close. <laughs> I think he was uh, played it down a lot. It might have touched his foot. But this is where we see the potential jeopardy, as you just saw from the UNI scrum. Just never got themselves on the right angle. Referee's right there. He's been excellent all day, Matt Lake. Um, just driving in at the angle, you can see the arm went up straight away. There was no messing around from the referee. He saw, he saw something clear and obvious on his side. Um, and the Tigers, Memphis, have got themselves some good field position. But this is a very, very difficult throw for Musa Burnett. Musa Burnett from Beirut, Lebanon, to put this one in. Looks good in the middle. Ball comes down, but not straight, according to the referees. So we'll see what you and I chooses here. Might be wiser to go for the scrum. Absolutely. So you've got to weigh it up. Do you go for the field position, but the line out's a bit of a lottery? Or do you take the scrum or even the tap and go from where you are? So it's really tough decision making for the players out there. And I've been looking at the games all day, been commentating on games all day, some high quality rugby, but the line outs have suffered across the board because of this wind. And that's why it's such a crucial part in this game. So said games all day, small college earlier. It's going to be Babson taking on Wayne State in the small college final on Sunday. The winner of this game taking on IUP and the University of Pennsylvania in the Division II final. Tomorrow's Division I AA and Division I final along with some bowl games as we see the Panthers take this one into contact. Lost a little ground. Referee penalizing the Panthers this time. Coming off their feet. So the Tigers an opportunity. A great rush defense there for Tigers. Really put the pressure on. It was number 13 there, Roman, getting completely, getting some great line speed and getting a good tackle in. And that's what led to the, as we just looked there at the line out, which just snuck in. But it was a great work from Ronan initially to get the tackle in. And you can see here, to see the pressure on, that means now you and I are all behind the gain line. You see how the players have to go backwards to go forwards. That puts them in a position where we just drive straight off the feet. There's no fair contest there. Matt Lake right on the spot once again. Tigers put this ball to the tail of the line out. Looking to get a maul going here. They're close to the line. Good drive coming in. Referee says it's fine. Man coming off the back there, but not. Caleb Schmidt's been effective in this area. If he can get a hold of the ball to the ground, go the Tigers. Schmidt again moves a little wider. Dempsey looking for some space. Space opens up. Number 12 is through. He's looking at the line. Across they go. Right there, it is the number 12. Sir Baga has been huge in this game. Touches down a try. Tigers tie it up. And just as this game has been going back and forth, the lead switching hands on all occasions, but this time it was great. And they were initially remember it came from that really good defensive play from Memphis. That allowed them to get the line out, and it was a great line out in this conditions. And then once they secured the ball, they're just moving that ball. You can just see there Dempsey just drops it off. Bit of a weak tackle. We've got number 11 in there who just missed that tackle. Um, probably not used to defending in that 13 channel. Maybe Marco, if that's where he would have been. The guys went off injured, unfortunately. And then it was a good fend, a nice balance running. Two good fends. Oh, that was a big one. When you slow that one down, he's <laughs> going to be enjoying that one for a long time. And the kick is good there. So it's a two-point lead for the Tigers here. As our lead changes again here in Houston at the National Collegiate Rugby Semifinals. Okay. Celebration there as UNI gets ready to kick us off. Yeah. I'm off here, just waiting possibly a player change. We wait for them to come back in. We'll take a look at this try. Yeah, just see there, number 11, Franzman got himself in a poor tackle position. But just look at the fan, the strength, and the power to get over. That is a brilliant finish and won exactly what his team needed. But it just came off for good work. It was fundamentals done well from the line out 
uh, just moving the ball into the wider channels. Good collisions. It was a good try. Time is back on. Referee Lake gets us going. The restart comes from the Panthers. Tigers ball in hand. See if this momentum shifts again. Right there's the try score. Make a little ground. Ball back here to Caleb Schmidt. Schmidt gets it back and the knock on creeps in. So an opportunity here, a penalty. Player picking it up in front of where the knock on was. Yeah. So you and I an opportunity here, just two points in it. Highly frustrating from a coach's point of view. One thing from a knock on, you've just scored and then you knock the ball on, but then playing the ball from an offside position, it's just so tempting for players, but you must get back on side. You can't play that ball. That's why it turned into a penalty as opposed to a scrum. And it looks like they've opted for the points. But when you score points, it's critical that you get an exit in because you've just done all that effort and you're just coughing up an opportunity straight away. So highly frustrating there from a Tigers point of view, but brilliant from UNI. They've got an opportunity to nudge this over and give themselves a one point lead. But look, even if you miss, obviously it's not ideal. You've still got field position, which is gonna be absolutely crucial as the clock starts ticking down. Should have kept track of how many lead changes there have been. This will be yet another one here. If Randall puts this one through, then quite a back and forth game. Randall steps, Randall hits in his range. Assistant referees are happy. We're a one point game. It is 34-33. The Panthers over the Tigers. More action to come, just you wait. It has been one of the more exciting games I've called in a while. Yeah, I'm glad there's 25 minutes left. This is certainly one of my favorite games I've called in a long time. It's not just a high scoring game, it's a high quality game. That's the difference. There's some really good rugby being played from both teams. They go short this time to the Tigers, but it's well taken by the Panthers. They've been solid on these kickoffs. It worked out very well for them until I said that. But a penalty creeps in against the Tigers. The referee's going to have a word here. Go. Okay. Take a minute, talk to all of them. Clear space. The referee laying down the law on that lake. Yeah, I'm going to give them a chance to talk and then we'll call the scrum. Memphis captain to have a chat with his team. It'll be a penalty here for the Panthers. So good result for them on this restart here for a scrum. Yeah, I think that's a wise play. Just as we look back at the kickoff, it was a good contestable kickoff. I just said, you and I did really well there. Just as we look back, I'm just trying to find out what the penalty was actually for. That looks absolutely fine to me. So it might have been something just slightly afterward. Got the word from on high. There have been seven lead changes so far in this game, Craig. Well, that creates uh, an excellent contest, which we're seeing now. And this is a good decision from the scrum. Good, solid scrum, good platform, and it just takes the jeopardy of the line out, out of the game. Gentry Stack is going to go across field there. And look at that. Nearly goes to hand. Would have been quite a play. But it's knocked on. Unfortunate for him by Wiederholt. It's going to be a scrum here for the Memphis Tigers interesting change of tactic there yeah good good tactic for me um they secured the scrum which we've done really well takes the liner out it was a good kick maybe a slightly off the right hand side so it didn't go quite as far what he wanted it to but if Wiedervolt had his chance again he would have wanted that that was a clear opportunity to get the ball although there was defenders there it was a big opportunity and these this is going to be a game of very fine margins John. he just glanced at the defender at the last second there Emilio Salazar coming across because I have just off the ball weeder hold for a second He could have been clear with that ball. Here comes Caleb Schmidt. Caleb Schmidt Decides that cross kicks are a good idea puts one up doesn't go to his effect comes down to the Panthers Panthers Cleaning up this ruck area Memphis Tigers had a lot of turnover ball in that first half Panthers now on the move ball spills forward out of the hands there the Referee spots it can be a scrum here for the University of Memphis just a couple of errors creeping on the other side right now. Yeah, fatigue has become a massive part. These two teams have been going at it against each other. It's been very physical. There's been a lot of running. Uh, just a really, really finely contested game. But as we approach the last quarter, that's when you tend to find fatigue has a significant, significant part in the game. And now it's which team can sustain the pressure the longest and minimize mistakes. And that's not to be negative, but it's just a matter of fact that as teams get more tired, who can make the less mistakes and just play the most clean again? game? 
Ball in, pressure from the Panthers spilled off the back there. UNI able to capitalize on this. Looks like it's a UNI advantage. Ball comes back to the Tigers again. Thought it was spilled forward, but I think it decided to ruck from where we are. So referee Lake obviously in a better place to see that. That one's spilled forward. Referee again says it went back. That one's spilled forward. <laughs> referee says that one was spilled forward. So scrub advantage here for the Panthers. Was that a high tackle coming in from the outside center of Memphis? Referee is going to say, let's play on. We're good to go. 22, the Panthers as ever, unafraid to run. Gentry stack. Tigers trying to force the issue here, in and over. Referee's gonna go back. For an injured player. For an injured player, and the infraction was back here. I think you and I were a little, a little bit unfortunate there. It seemed like there was uh, three or four knock-ons in that passage from Memphis. Uh, you just get it just shows you how fine a margins there are. It's just as we look at an injured player, it looks like is it number yeah, two. Musa Banat, Banat. Yeah, it's criminology major. He's in a good game. He's a powerful player. You can just see he's a, he's a strong, strong guy. He will not want to be leaving this field. 5'8", 225, really solid. Played Spartan rugby in high school as a twin brother. Probably not going to come on the field. And then moving a little gingerly there, but headed back towards the team. Just as we look back at this play, just it went for the pick and go, just moving the ball. There was a knock on there. And just as you look to tidy up the ball, it looks like the second. Yeah, it looks like his ankle just got caught under him. Absolutely nothing in that from a from a foul play point of view. Just unfortunate. Maybe he'll be a bit of a, a bit annoyed with his friend knocking the ball on, and he was trying to trying to clean up the mess. Um, but he's definitely putting on his body on body on the line for the team. See Coach Hill there. You and I chosen the scrum here. We're taking this from here after a knock on on this side of the field. Referee Lake's gonna bring it back together. We're just almost halfway through the second half. Seven D changes, we're at 34-33. Panthers over Tigers. National Collegiate Rugby. Championship weekend here on the Rugby Network. Ball kicked in behind, good kick. Find some ground there. Salazar, Salazar thinks about passing Salazar, getting his players in a little bit of trouble here. Great coming, ball on the ground, picked up by the Panthers. Referee Lake says, go ahead, let's play on. Good work from the Panthers. That was Franzen, was coming to the centers. They look forwards there. Oh, it's Sidwell, happy to carry all game long. This one going up in the air from Randall. Is it gonna hit the ground? It does, player runs it in a touch there. Good kick, forces the player in a touch. We're gonna go back for a line out for UNI. Randall, what a well-placed kick, just forcing that Tigers player in a touch of the ball. Yeah, absolutely. So if he had his time back there for Memphis, he would have called the mark. If he had called the mark as he caught the ball, it would have been absolutely fine. But you can see a clear change of tactics there from Rando. He's kicking the ball as he caught it here. If he called mark, the play would have been dead. He clearly didn't. So he ran out, and that's where the referee was like, nope, he touched the line. It's going to be a line out. So maybe just a little bit of inexperience there. He could have called the mark as soon as he caught the ball right there. That extra step, he means he's in touch. And you and I have got a great attack position. Great attack and line it here up by one point. Can extend that lead a little bit. If this goes to hand, just a little slow down here. Player getting attended to right now. I think we'll start to see this now. We talked about fatigue earlier. We're going to be seeing a lot more of the stop-start nature of the game. So we'll see the coaches talking to their players. Hey, Miss Getty into Rabbit. Was marker there. Oh, sorry, that was the Tigers player, Jason Roman. Up, oh, got my 
Blues and purples mixed up for a second there. Time is back on. They go to the front to Kelderman. Kelderman gets his 300-pound frame in action, but driven back by the Tigers. Pick and go, UNI staying. You see the players in the four point stance there. Looking to hold that one down. Isaacson, the hooker, he really uses his leverage well. Here's the big fella, Kelderman. Kelderman. No fancy footwork that time from the big man. That one just goes slightly off there. They're going to come back to this side, looking to set it up. Kelderman again over the ball. Kelderman, ball in hand. Trying to drive through some players here, looking at the try line, can't get there. UNI keeping it tight. In the first half, a couple of these were turned over by the Tigers, so UNI has to be careful here, not to get held up. Player at the line. Referee whistles. And knocked on in one of those exchanges, so it's gonna be a scrum with their own five meter line for the Tigers, sometimes in those situations, you just run out of bodies. Absolutely, but you've got to give credit to Memphis. The Tigers there. What I really noticed in that defensive play is how low the defenders were. We mentioned a couple of times in the first half how high they were getting, and that allowed the snipes, but the defenders were getting really low, so they were getting, you can see there, that's a great picture. Look how low he was. He's just not allowing that momentum like they did in the first half, so that was a good lesson learned, but they've still got, even though they got the turnover scrum, They've got a big job to do here. First, they've got to win the scrum, then they've got to figure out how they're going to clear their lines. Pressure coming in from the Panthers. Caleb Schmidt taking that one back. They got the ball out of their try zone. Big power run there. What work again from Baga. He has been very, very key to go forward for this team. Running from their own line are the Tigers. Get the ball there to Jalen McKenzie. You can see a ton of McKenzie ball again. Going over the ball, the Panthers looking to turn this one over. Can they get it? Cannot. Coming back to the Tigers. Tigers playing with fire down to their own end. As Musa Banat takes that one in. Seems to be fine and back from his little knock earlier. They go across the middle field, getting the ball out back. Can they make something out of this? They're looking to go for a long run here. They get the ball to William Toy. Nice break by the winger there. Number 11, big break coming from Tyler Rogers. Tyler Rogers tripped up. The ball comes up to the Panthers. But a penalty there as a player. It didn't seem to come around the correct way. Caleb Schmidt's going to go quick. Caleb Schmidt, players are back 10, so they're going to go. Here's Tyler Rogers. Couldn't get in a full flight before. Just tripped up, but Memphis outside the 22 of UNI. Nice break. Coming back inside is Remscheid. Cross field they come. Do they have the shape together? Taken down there is Connor Dempsey. Connor Dempsey, ball gets away into the hands of Banat. Banat pushes one off, and the hooker is looking at the line. Is he over? Banat scores. We have the eighth lead change and taking the lead by four points right now are the Memphis Tigers. I think it's safe to say his ankle is absolutely fine now. I tell you what, you will not see a better bump off than what we just saw there. And he can't even walk the big guy, but my word. Criminology major out of Beirut, Lebanon, Musa Banat. What a run that was. He came from absolutely nowhere like a record ball. And I can't wait to see this one back because he bumped off that last defender for fun. Just as we look back here, nice pick and go. Just look how he gets low. Oh, that is a beautiful carry. And then he's got the momentum to reach out and score. That was a brilliant try there for Memphis and you've got to remember this started from the scrum on their own five meter line that's how impressive this try was I can't tell you how respectful I am of these two teams they are scoring great tries here we are just team work tries coming across for the Floyd point game we've a six point game so less than a converted try Lord knows what's left to come in this one this is the matchup of the day Take a look at Connor Dempsey. Well within Dempsey's range here. Dempsey comes forward, no one chases, but pushes it off there. So we are at an unconverted try. Would put another lead change in here. 
for the UNI Panthers as we take another look. Oh, just look at the angle you can see there, Bernat. He saw that opportunity and then he just puts that bump on. Great slow motion camera work from Next Level Rugby. Then the reach out and the try. That was a big moment. He is going to be replaying that one for a long time in his life. Looks like he's ready to just go back to work here. Lunch pail player doing the hard work. The UNI pushes this one downfield. Five meter line, they've come from here before. Tigers, fullback Salazar. Schmidt spots some space, rolls it in the touch. Can the UNI line out? That's a really nice kick. That Four is, points in it. Yeah, that is such a good kick. He saw the space, he put it in behind, he made sure it bounced. So it wasn't going to go back to where he kicked it, but you can see the referee assistant, the assistant referee's flag there is really fluttering in the wind. It just tells you how tough it is there. So now the pressure's on you and I now to not only get their line out sorted, but also to get into re attack. So really, really nice play there from number nine, Schmidt. Up to the middle of the line out, but sails over the top, winds up in Harry Hagen's hands. Harry Hagen. Number eight from Memphis gonna take this one forward. H Hagen's gonna get that back up and run again. Referee says it's fine. Not held, so away go the Tigers. Tigers in the ascendancy right now in this game of momentum. A push off there. He's been in the try zone with that before. Good ball to the outside. One more player. Do they have the space? They're in the corner. Can they touch it down? They are in. Assistant referee says try awarded. And a long lead extended there as it looks like. Christian Flynn touches it down for the Memphis Tigers. This is an unbelievable rugby. This, what a great try. I'm going to talk about the boring bit first. It all came from that box kick, what came to the line out because they knew the line out. It's hard to do it with the attack and ball. UNI didn't get it. Then they managed to secure possession. But just look at the offload and the support play there. So that's a nice, nice ball. And then another great little pass under pressure. And it's all about just sitting down that last defender and a great finish in the corner. He's going to be hoping there's a cameraman out there to get that still as he dived in. But again, Memphis just have a knack of scoring just multiple tries in a row to get themselves back into it. Just as we look, I like this little bit here. Just draws and passes, invites the tackler on, and there it is, the camera work, the dive in, and the score. Wow. Great work from Memphis Tigers. I'm excited to see what you and I can bring back to the uh, bring back to this game because I think there's still more to go, John. There's plenty of time here, plenty to go. We've seen these teams build momentum. Nobody letting down as a long kick is going to fall in front of the post there. So two missed conversions on two tries, but it gives them the lead and extends the lead for them for the Tigers. Panthers are going to need to respond here. From a Tigers point of view, you want to be kicking that ball nice and long. You want to make that, uh, excuse me, from a Panthers point of view, you want to be kicking it nice and long, get it down there, make the Tigers go the full length if they're going to do anything again. Because if you go short here and it doesn't quite work out, the Tigers are going to love that because you can see that they can maintain possession. Referee. Coming up here, I don't know if we have a Player change coming on. What would you do here, John? Would you go long or I go would short? Go for 10 minutes to go, I'd go long, try to contest it. Try to force that. They need some points on the board here. They're down nine. I don't think it's, it's not quite the time where you've got to take high risks. You've still got plenty of time in this game. Looks like we went for the short one. It's knocked on there by Memphis, so good result for the Panthers. See what they decide to do with this ball. Randall comes in, moves it off there to Kelderman. Kelderman it takes a high tackle, so that's going to work out big for this team. Going to go quick. This has been their go-to each and every time, working their way forward, doing a better job of keeping their feet a little bit to get some support there. Ball comes out from Randall. Get a little wide there to Kelderman. Kelderman not getting ahead of steam as much in this half. Driving again. Randall might want to try to speed this up just a bit. 
So this slow ball giving Memphis time to reset as Kelderman gets met by two. Randall, off to the side, Santa Yama makes the pass that time. But knocked on in there, so it's gonna come back to the Tigers. Are these Panthers starting to tire out a little bit? And that is the jeopardy. So they did the high risk, high reward. They went short, they got the ball back. But you're also still playing the ball from 30, 40, 50 meters out. That is the risk. If you go long from the kickoff, you're deep in their half, you're potentially gonna get the ball back. But look, hindsight's wonderful. These young men are really going for it. But yeah, you can see fatigue is a big thing right now. This is a good opportunity for a Tigers just to take a bit of a heat out of the game. They don't need to rush it now, so I don't think they're going to be pushing things too much. Pressure coming in. Speaking of pushing from this Panthers team, it squirts out Schmidt on the spot. However, Schmidt happy to dance around a bit, but gives to a player who's driven back. Panthers trying to force the issue around the breakdown here. Across they come. Little hole opens up there. Dempsey tries to take it, but it closes. Caleb Schmidt trying to get a hand free. It does. Gets a ball up into the hands of William Toy. Toy gives it the try score. Try score taken in. Continuing to move. May have been happy to do this, but they're going to go to the boot this time. Okay. Dempsey push it downfield. Yeah, he's going to roll in front of the 22. Four defenders on here. So a little work to do for Mason Burr. Mason Burr. Teammates arrive eventually. We're at the 73 minute mark here. So just eight minutes to go on the game clock. UNI trailing by nine. We know they have it in them. Tigers stiffen up this defense. Kelderman goes for a little bit of a wide pass there after he draws a couple in. Tackle on 21. Alex Millar. A little over the shoulder there, but. Referee says it's fine, we're gonna play on. Kelderman looking for the little pass. He does a lot, not sure he has an 80 meter run in him, the big man. Signal there, and then we're gonna to go to a kick here. Box kick down, goes across the 50, bounces. Looks like it's coming towards you and I, wasn't knocked on. Referee's gonna let them play, that one comes off the foot there. Still alive, Dempsey puts a pass out. This is a man with some pace, we've seen him before, but Cut down this time. Dempsey has to come in. Schmidt works his way across. Little tip pass here. Starting to put it together. Nice offload. Up into the hands of Roman. But knock on comes in at their own 40 meter line. It's going to be UNI Panther scrum. Six minutes on the game clock. Well, that was a lung busting play there. You can see hands starting to go on hips from both teams. The boys have been working hard out there. Some players are taking knees, and rightly so. That was a brutal two minutes of play there. Just both teams going back and forth. Yeah, just you just feel like at any moment someone's going to make a line break and just uh, light this game up. But the defenses, when they've needed to, they've just made that last ditch tackle when a line break has been threatening to be made. Um, yeah, you can see Cramp is starting to kick in. Yeah, the boys have worked hard. You've got to remember. The winner goes through and is into the final, uh, which are on Sunday. So there's going to be a lot of ice baths. There's going to be a lot of recovery certainly will after be. this game for both teams because they have put their bodies on the line for their colleges. Last game of the day here. Tigers versus Panthers. Indiana University of Pennsylvania waiting to take on the winner. They beat the University of Vermont Catamounts. Player up, ready to go, cramp done. Colin Remshai, tough man. 6'3", 215 from Memphis. Christian Brothers High School. Lifeguard and a beekeeper. All around uh, man right there. Leg time to keep that ball up. Ball is here for Randall. Randall moves the ball out. Kick forward there from UNI. Five minutes on the game clock. Pushing that back in. Looking for some pressure on these Memphis players. Memphis going to get the kick in. Ball comes back to Randall. Randall 
Looking for some runners, but finds some space. Puts that ball up. Going to have to get some support runners there. Good job keeping their feet. Ball still alive. Randall at the back of this. Finds a runner. Runner looking for some space there. Hager. Pressure coming in from the Tigers. Ball's free. Referee says Remscheid is going to pick that one up. Knocked on that time by the Tigers. Just over four and a half to go in the game clock. It's going to be a scrum here for UNI. Nine points in it, winding down. Another change coming in here for the Tigers. They send Mohamed Alamiri on the field. Mohamed Alamiri from Memphis. White Station High School. Just a big moment there. I believe it was number eight. Was it Harry Hagen for Memphis. Absolutely brilliant bit of work, and it was it kind of went unnoticed. But his work break at the breakdown here he is, number eight. Look how he's pushing through, and he just calls an absolute havoc. And that's what eventually gets the turnover. Just look at that effort on a 76 minute in the game, and he's worked hard all day. No wonder it kicked in there. It looks like he's got a bit of a cramp, but that are the sort of moments where, yes, the tries are absolutely beautiful. That's the substance, and that's what teams look at to get you over the line. Scrum game here as Remscheid is off the field. Randall digging this one out a little slowly. We're like Randall gets the ball away. Randall gets the ball. And here they come. Big bump off. Looking for the line. Gentry stack. Touches it down. We are still alive here, Craig Wilson. What a try. Kick to come would bring it close, but unconverted try away right now. Whatever Musa Benat can do with the bump off, Gentry can do it as well. Gentry Stack can do it as well. That was an excellent breakthrough. I'm looking forward to seeing that one again. Accounting and finance, he's out of Gainesville, Iowa. That was a massive moment just when his team needed it because it went nine points down uh, before this try. But just look at this work. He's going through and then watch that bump off. Thank you. Get off the bus. And then that was a brilliant carry just what he needed at this time. This kick is very important now. Kick is certainly important, but just five points in it now. Even without the kick, there will be some time to play. See Coach Ramirez looking on. Kick does not go. Close, but not happen. We should be at... Look for Turtle's Look for Turtle's 39, four points in it, close five. Unconverted try wins it here. So we're taking a look at the stack run. Stack says this field's not big enough for the two of us. Works his way through the try line, what a competitor. And if any team, well, any two teams can go the full length of the field, you would back either of those. So this last two minutes is gonna be tasty because this is a one score game. Oh, strap yourself in. <laughs> This is excitement right here. Hairs in the back of my neck standing up as that ball goes high into this Houston night. Taken down well by the Panthers. Panthers put it across there. Randall finds a runner. Runner finds just a little space in between two defenders. Randall. Goes back to the left-hand side, looking for that space to open up. Players looking to raise their hand. Sinewell takes it in again. Great evening for him. Kelderman recycles the ball. A little slower than they had hoped for there as the ball's coming out. It's in a little bit of space. Can they make this work? That is Mason Burr takes it in. Just outside their 22. One minute on the game clock. Kind of some referees time. Will be in referee Lake's hands. Should be very close is our time, I'm told. Driven back there by Memphis. Memphis trying to force a mistake here, looking for the break. Gentry Stack shows Gentry Stack. Holds onto the ball, gets rid of it, stays in their hands. Dangerous days there. But this Panthers team is willing to play. Randall. Have to keep ball in hand. Kelderman at the 22. Player over there from Memphis. Can he rip it out? He cannot. That was Benat, the try scorer. Trying to dig that one away. Player still trying to get in there. 
Memphis has to be careful, can't get penalized here. You don't want to get that field position to the Panthers. Nine min, nine seconds, we're away here. We got a good run, big break. That's a try score, Gentry stack, stack taken down. Good last gasp tackle there from the Tigers, but they're at the 40 meter line now are the Panthers. Can they maintain this possession? We're at time right now. This is potentially the last play of the game. What mistakes from either team here. Little offload there. Kelderman has to reach for it, but he gets a hold of it, working his way forward. Kelderman falls loose, chipped away there, kicked forward. So the Panthers have to go back on this. Player dives on him on the ground. Was that illegal? Yes, it was. Penalty undercut the Panthers there. Choice here. We'll see what they decide to do, Craig. Uh, I wouldn't take the line out personally. I would try and keep the ball in. Just the line out is way too much of a lottery right now. Uh, so maybe just keep backing yourself. Defending is hard as well. So I wonder if they're just going to set this up and just try and go for the next 70 meters. What excitement we have here in Sabercat Stadium. This is going to be the last play. Bargain of the penalty, of course. Tyler Rogers there. Scrum could be a good option as well because that manipulates the defense. Yeah, there it is called. So the defense is going to have to be manipulated and set up. So that means there's options should you win your own scrum, which is obviously a big moment in this game. And both teams have got to get absolutely everything. But I think this is a good call. Uh, just because the line outs, there's just so much jeopardy and no teams have real ascendancy there. So you want to take the lottery out, get the scrum and then see if you can make something happen. From a Memphis point of view, you've just got one last play to defend. Oh, this is big. They're just slowing it up here, cramping on the field. Maybe Isaacson, so it's gonna be very important. Keep that man on the field here. He's gonna swing that foot as a hooker, Craig. So this is uh Interesting conundrum there, really showing their hand are the Panthers. Well, I think he's going to have cramp from the whole time. This is where you've just got to do it for your teammates and uh, just get through this next 10 seconds because he's going to be cramping pretty hard in this position right now. Ball in from Randall. It's okay. It's at the back there. Randall is going to get this one. Looking for stack. Looking for the wraparound. They have it. Is the space going to open up? Can get the ball away. Balls in the hands out there, but tossed out and rolls in a touch. Referee Matt Lake spots it and whistles it. It is going to be a semifinal barn burner nail biter win for the Tigers of the University of Memphis. They will take on Indiana University of Pennsylvania in the National Collegiate Rugby D2 final on Sunday. What a well played game, Craig. Could have gone either way. So many lead changes, so much excitement, so much good rugby. Yeah, epic rugby for both teams. Really, really well done. Great to watch, but you've got to give credit there for the Tigers. When they scored once, they would score twice, three times. This has been one of the classic matches of this game. And we're going to throw down to Tyler Deutsch, who is with the number nine for Memphis, is Caleb Schmidt. I'm here with Caleb Schmidt, the scrum half from Memphis. Oh my God, what an electric 80 minutes of rugby at two tries yourself. How does it feel? It feels great. Uh, all the support from the team, uh, unbelievable. We stuck in it. Uh, they had us at the first half, but we stayed strong, and it's, it's a team effort. It's all in, too. I love it. Once you guys hit that pace, you didn't stop. What is the mindset that makes Memphis worthy of a national championship? Or like that. That's the best part. Yeah. to play Indiana University of Pennsylvania on Sunday in the D2 Championship in the Small College Championship on Sunday from earlier today. It's going to be Babson taking on Wayne State College. 
But tomorrow on the Rugby Network, brought to you by National Collegiate Rugby and Next Level Rugby, we're going to have the Rhino Bowl. Fordham takes on Southern Nazarene University, followed by the D1A Championship, Louisville versus Kentucky. The Lone Star Bowl is going to be Alabama versus Sam Houston. And then at 6 o'clock Central, 7 o'clock Eastern, it's going to be a D1 Championship game for National Collegiate Rugby, St. Bonaventure University versus Notre Dame College. That's it for us today. For Craig Wilson, I'm John Broker, and this is Next Level Rugby. This is on the Rugby Network. This is National Collegiate Rugby. Join us tomorrow.